You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we all want to hit those solid irons. We all really want to compress that golf ball. And think in your mind that player that you know, they may not be very big, they may not be very strong, but when they hit a golf ball, it sounds heavy on the face. It has a loud boom to it. Even though the swing doesn't look very hard, that ball takes off, it penetrates through the air. They're one of the longest hitters in your group, even though they may not have quite as much club head speed as some other players. Well, that's what we all wanna be. We all wanna be that guy that has that heavy hit, that really solid strike, and it feels like every single one of them is really, really solid. What is it that happens for the opposite players. A lot of times what I see are players that are losing forward shaft lean. They're kind of flipping the club through contact here. And instead of having that heavy, powerful hit, the ball just kind of floats up in the air. Maybe we lose that shot to the right. It starts to leak off to the right and it goes into the rough. Maybe it even slices a little bit when we really hit one bad. And it really just feels weak. You swing hard. The harder you swing, the weaker it goes, the shorter it goes. So that's the first problem. When pros are hitting the golf ball, when players that have that heavy hit are hitting the golf ball, what they're doing is they're taking loft off this club. So my hands are in front of the golf club, in front of the head at impact, the shaft is leaning forward, and they're taking loft off of the natural loft of this golf club. So if I'm swinging you know, an eight iron here, pros are taking about 30% of the loft off the club. Every club is a little bit different, but a, an eight iron probably has, you know, let's call it 37 degrees of loft, something like that on it. They're taking that all the way down. Pros are taking that all the way down to 26, 25 degrees aloft when they're actually hitting the ball by getting that shaft leaning forward. When you do that and it takes that loft off there, it's like hitting a golf ball with a hammer. You're taking that loft off and it's transferring all that weight into the golf ball. Now, if I took the opposite approach to that, imagine I'm hitting a flop shot and the face is wide open, I could swing 200 miles an hour. I could swing as hard as I want to, but that ball is just gonna glance across. That's why sometimes you feel like you're swinging really hard, the ball's not going anywhere. So that's the first piece. Number one, we gotta de-loft that club. And I'm gonna show you guys a great trick to make that happen to get that heavier hit. Then number two, we gotta hit that club face when it's closing down. So a lot of times players will have that face opening up a bit Again, that weaker shot that kind of flies to the right, maybe even that slice that floats up in the air, that's opening the face. And what happens there when I open this face, even if I have forward shaft lean, if I open that face, I'm adding loft to it. So I need to take off loft by having forward shaft lean, and I need to take off even more loft by hitting a little bit of a draw for most players. Now pros can hit a fade or a draw, that's getting really, really precise with this. But for most players, I say, let's go ahead and hit that nice, low, powerful draw. If you overdo it, maybe you get a couple hooks in there, but you're gonna be hitting it longer. You're gonna be hitting a lot of great quality shots. So if we can deal off the club and get it to draw, we're gonna be way better off than most of the players that we're gonna be playing. So now let's talk about a little trick that we can get to actually make this happen. It's all great in theory. We say, okay, I understand the heavy hit. I understand how pros are doing that, but I can't do it myself. All right, let's have a cheat where we can make this happen. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and set up to this golf ball with our feet kinda of, kind of together, only about five or six inches, four inches or so, a club head width apart directly in front of this golf ball. So I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna hit it this way. Now what I want you to do from there is I want you to take your left foot and I want you to open it about 45 degrees so it looks like this. Then I want you to pick up your right foot and I want you to match that to your left foot. Okay, so now both of my toes are even with each other. They're facing about 45 degrees in front. If you look at that ball position, it's kind of on my right heel. I may be a little bit too far forward there. Maybe just toward the back center of my stance will be perfect as far as this. Now, the reason I'm using this crazy forward stance is because now that's gonna force me to get some forward shaft lean, force me to get in front of this golf ball, and it's really gonna help me to compress that golf ball and hit it low. I want you to about four or five shots and just try to get that ball to fly as low as you can. You don't wanna go more than say 30 or 40 yards while you're doing this, but I'm really gonna to try to deal off that club, really get that worm burner. So that's exactly what that one did. It kind of took off, probably went closer to 100, 120 yards even though I barely swung just because it had a lot of pop to it. It really transferred a lot of energy to it. So the next thing I'm gonna do after I've done a few of those and I get used to hitting it low, that's the de-lofting part that we talked about. Now we gotta make sure that we're gonna hit that draw. Now again, is every player have to hit a draw? No, I like to play a fade. 
There's a lot of pros that play a fade. I'm not saying that the draw is the only way to go, but I'm saying for those of you who aren't getting as heavy a hit as you'd like, hitting that draw is gonna transfer a lot more energy into it. It's gonna get you hitting it farther, and you're really gonna have a lot more fun playing this game if we can do that. So this time, what I want you to do, still have that forward shaft lean, but really feel like you turn those hands down. If I had my left wrist, I'm gonna turn my logo of my glove to the ground, and I'm gonna feel like my hand releases by doing this keeping that logo of the glove to the ground. So if I was exaggerating that with a golf club, it would be this motion. I'm letting that club de-loft and rotate around. Now I'm really exaggerating here. This would be taking that club face and bring it to outside of the club. That would be a big time snap hook if I really did this. Just a little bit goes a long way, but I'll know I'm doing it right if I hit that really low shot and that ball starts to curve from right to left. I'd love to see you guys just go ahead and overdo this at first. I'd rather see a guy play a 20 yard hook and really compress the heck out of it at first. We can always tone down, do a little bit less and straighten that shot out. But until we've really felt that heavy hit, it's a hard thing to describe until you've experienced it yourself. So really, really exaggerate on this. So this one, I'm really gonna hit that low draw. That ball really started to cut, or it really started to draw even over Drew, but it still got some pretty good distance for a little half shot. Now these are just drills to help you get the sensation of that heavy hit. It's basically just a giant you know, chip shot, punch shot that we're hitting here. As you get more comfortable with that, now let's try to keep that feeling of a heavy hit, but let's gradually get our stance more back to normal. So if this is the drill that we just did, feet facing in front, really got a lot of forward shaft lane, hooking that ball. I want you to gradually start to get your stance closer to, to, to normal. So start to get your toes pointing a little bit more back toward this golf ball and try to recreate that same heavy hit that you had when you're really exaggerating. There we go. So that one's nice draw, really low. Those are almost getting to the green from 150 yards with a little punch eight iron. That's just how much energy is getting transferred in this ball. So then now as I get comfortable with that, I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna go a little bit more toward a normal stance. I'm gonna hit a few more, see if I can get that nice, heavy, low penetrating ball flight. And then I'm gonna go back to my normal stance and I'm gonna try to recreate the same feel. It should be normal than your, or lower than your normal ball flight. It should turn over a little bit more right to left probably than your normal ball flight. But again, we can always tone that down a little bit. I just want you to get, get you guys really over compressing the golf ball here at first. So after I've done these drills, I'm gradually gonna go back to my normal stance, making sure that I try to get that forward shaft lean with each one, really compress the golf ball. You guys are gonna hit some great shots. Golf's a weird game. We all struggle. If it was easy, everybody would come right out their very first round, they'd shoot even par, they'd break par, they'd have the time of their life, and everybody would just be great at golf. But it's an awkward game. In this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the most awkward pieces of this. And once we tap into this, we kind of realize how it's supposed to be, golf gets a lot easier. So let's break this down into two parts. Number one, I'm trying to hit this golf ball that's in front of me, and I don't really wanna turn away from this. So everybody naturally, their natural inclination, myself included, is I wanna stay facing this golf ball so that I can make sure that I hit this golf ball and I hit it really nice and solid. So the last thing I wanna do naturally is turn away from the golf ball or open up as I'm coming through this golf ball. And what ends up happening as a result of this and what causes so many problems out there is now we stay locked onto this golf ball. We don't wanna move away from it. And all of a sudden we start to hit with just all arms, all arms and hands. So you've probably seen a lot of swings that look something like this. A player sets up to the golf ball, he gets everything nice and lined up and then he doesn't turn away from it. And it's all hands and arms, doesn't go very far, not a lot of power. You're really not gonna play the kind of golf you want to. Consistency's not very good, everything's not very good. Well, if you think about it, we don't really do anything else that way. If I was to just grab a couple of these golf balls and start tossing them down the fairway, you notice what I would naturally do is open up. So my hips, my shoulders, my body, everything would open up more toward the target and then I would just let that toss. So I'm actually tossing this direction to the side of my body, but I'm letting everything open up so that now that's pretty straight as I'm tossing that golf ball. Now that would be very awkward if I faced forward and I threw that golf ball across the side of my body. It wouldn't look very natural, looks forced. I wouldn't be very, very good at that. Same thing if I had a hammer here. Let's imagine I had you know, a piece of wood here and I was gonna hammer a nail into the side of the wood. I wouldn't do this and keep my body square Neither would you. Naturally, you would start to open up a little bit and you would really get some power hitting that hammer into that piece of wood in front of us. Same thing with baseball. If I grabbed a baseball bat here and I was automatically gonna hit a fastball, I wouldn't do this 
and swing with all arms, naturally you would start to open up a little bit, get those hips and shoulders going, and then you'd really be able to drive that ball down into the outfield, maybe even hit a home run. So golf is very similar to that. So we gotta come on through, make sure that we open up with our body. That way we can accelerate through the golf ball and the golf ball just gets in the way. We're swinging through it and letting contact happen. So that's the first part of this. We have to open up. But there's a second part. If I open up, let's think about what is one of the most common things, common problems I have in golf. Well, most players already start to come a little bit over the top. So we're making these swings and already coming over the top. Well, what happens if we open up even more? We come even more over the top. So the trick is we have to open up to be consistent, but we have to come from the inside with our hands, arms, and body. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video, how to come from the inside, really slot that club, what we call the move in the downswing, and then let your body open up. Things get a whole lot more natural. All right, so now we know the key is to open up and then still come from the inside and release the club. So let's break that down into two pieces. First, let's talk about the proper way to open up and make sure our body's in a good position here. And what I want you to do to make this really simple, let's take this club with just our right arm only. Now what you'll notice here, if I put my left arm just kind of behind my back just to get it out of the way, if I was gonna hit this golf ball, it would be pretty natural if I went ahead and let my body open up. So my hips are opening, they're probably 45 degrees here in front. My shoulders are going ahead and, and opening up to where they're almost 45 degrees in front. And you can imagine almost like that tossing motion we did with the golf ball. I'm just gonna go ahead, nice little easy swing back and through, and I'm just gonna let that golf ball kind of toss up the fairway there. So that's what I want you to visualize here in the beginning. Do about four or five, just practice swings with that until you feel comfortable opening up your body. Maybe grab a few golf balls and toss them down the fairway. If you're in your living room or something like that, just imagine tossing a few golf balls and then try to recreate the same thing in your golf swing. And really, that's about all a golf swing is. We're just opening up and tossing the golf club toward the target. Now, the second piece of that and why this looks so much different and the common question I get from there is, Okay, Clay, so if, if I'm just opening up and tossing toward the target, then why is it when I see all these pros, when we kind of pause at impact, it looks like their shoulders are fairly square. Their shoulders are kind of facing the target a little bit. I get that the hips are open, but the shoulders don't look very open. The reason for that is because your left arm is on the golf club. So if I take my, my setup with just my right arm only, and I go ahead and let everything open up as I was gonna toss this club to the target, my rib cage stays fairly open, but my left arm, my left shoulder kind of protracts across my body to be able to hold onto the club. So if I take that left arm off, let me go ahead and pause here at impact. If I take that left arm off the club, you'll notice that my ribs and my chest, my shirt buttons are actually facing out here in front. It's only, it's kind of an optical illusion when my left arm gets drug across my body or is across my body, it feels like it's kind of tight against my pec here. That's what's gonna make my shoulders look square. So in reality, the best players in the world, their ribs and their torso is open at impact. It's just that left arm across the body that makes it look square. So again, go ahead and make some practice swings, just right arm only, getting that feeling of tossing the club toward the target, and then recreate that same feeling, adding the left arm onto the club. So get comfortable with it at first. Once you're comfortable with it, start to make bigger and bigger swings with the left hand on there also, but you're gonna have that same sensation you did with tossing the golf ball down the fairway. All right, so we're ready for piece number two. Now, if you already tend to slice the ball a little bit or don't have that nice draw, as you start to open up a little bit more, your tendency is gonna be to come a little bit more over the top and swing even farther left. So here's the second really big key to this. The golf swing is coming from the inside. So if I'm facing this golf ball, you can imagine I'm swinging my club at about a 45 degree angle out to the right. And this is really what the golf motion is. Again, that's that tossing action that I was talking about. I'm tossing the golf ball this way. The only difference is, as we do this in a golf swing, as my body rotates open, now that's square. So the sensation is I'm tossing to the right, or my club is moving to the right through impact, and it's my body squaring up, or my body opening up, that allows that to actually be square. So a few out to the right, just to get the idea. And as that body opens up, now that's gonna be square or from the inside. Now, if I'm thinking about swinging the club this way, so now my body's toward the golf ball 
and I'm swinging the club across my body like this, well, what happens when I open up? Now everything's going way to the left, and that's the most common mistake that I see. Players are swinging across their body versus inside out from the inside. Now the second piece to this is once I get that sensation of that club kind of swinging out to the right this way, so do a few with just your hands and arms this way. If you're sitting at your desk, if you're sitting at home right now, stand right up. If you just watch this video and don't follow along, you're not really gonna get any better. It'll feel good to, to have some new ideas and some things to practice on, but let's actually make it stick right now, build a little bit of muscle memory. Stand up right now and go ahead and get this club to swing. So my hips are facing the golf ball and I'm gonna get this club to swing a little bit out to the right. All right, so I'm really letting that club swing out there. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm letting the club face turn on over. I don't wanna do this and hold off the club face and feel like I'm just holding everything open. I wanna go ahead and let that face turn on around. So as you start that downswing, this club, if you look at my wrist, is starting to rotate the face closed. The club's going from open to closed throughout the hitting area. Happens in every single good golf swing. Every, every great player is letting that face close down as they're coming through the shot. Now, depending on how much you want the ball to turn over from right to left, I could do a little bit more and really close the face, or I could do a little bit less. So look at your ball flight. If it's not getting the draw you want, I'm gonna feel like I'm more from the inside and I'm really letting that hand roll on over. So if we took our hand and we just did this, almost like if you're on a motorcycle and you turn the, the gas up, if I had that on a club and I did that same thing, that's that closing action of the club face. Same thing with the right hand. If I was on a motorcycle and I, I turned the gas back like this, that's that same action that's closing the face. We also let our hands roll on over as though you had doorknobs and you're gonna turn the doorknobs to the right, turn the doorknobs to the left. So when those are happening, I'm giving you a few feelings to have there, but I gotta let that face roll on over as I do that. So let's go ahead and do a couple here. Let's exaggerate. And if you're on the driving range, just take about 10 or 15 golf balls, set up square to it. And I want you to feel like you're just gonna swing way out, 45 degrees out to the right. Now you're gonna to wanna to put this ball a little bit back in your stance to do this drill. And again, this is only a drill to feel this. This is not exactly what's going on because your body will be opening up in the golf swing, but I wanna exaggerate here to get started. Put this ball on your back foot, swing a little bit out to the right, kind of that 45 degrees, and let that face roll on over. Now from there, you're gonna see that ball starts to really hook. So we can see that ball start to curve away from that bunker, even though I'm only hitting it 20 or 30 yards. Now it's gonna start way out there to the right and that's completely fine. So again, swinging 45 degrees this way, really letting that face turn on over and my, my body's kind of facing this golf ball as I'm doing that. So again, you see that ball start to want to curve back this way because of the spin on it. Now, once you're comfortable with that, now we have all the ingredients for a really good shot. Number one, I'm gonna go ahead and let my body open up like we did in the earlier video. Let everything open so that I'm tossing toward, the, toward the, the flag. Number two, I'm gonna have that sensation that that club is swinging out to the right and releasing. When I put both of those together, that's actually gonna be a square path and that ball is gonna be a little bit of a nice draw. So that's the real trick there. Golf is a side on game. So you gotta open up and you gotta let that club release if you wanna be really consistent. If we do this, the ball just gets in the way we square up the club face without even really having to think about it, and we can really hit some great shots. All right, guys, everybody wants to know how to get that great weight shift from the top, start the downswing perfectly so you can compress the golf ball, and everything just feels a lot easier. When you're out of sync, you feel like you're all discombobulated, the hands and arms and waist, everything's moving differently, then we really struggle. So. In this video, I'm gonna really walk you through it. We're gonna talk about the up and down motion of the golf swing and how you shift your weight up and down throughout the swing. We're gonna talk about the weight shift left and right. And then we're also gonna talk about the rotation and all of this kind of how you're starting the downswing properly when you're doing that. So I'm gonna get into a little bit of detail. I'm really gonna break it down piece by piece in the beginning, but don't be overwhelmed. If it starts to seem a little bit too complicated or a little bit too in depth, don't worry, at the end, I'm gonna tie all that together, give you one great simple drill to do to get that great transition and start of the downswing coming all the way into the finish. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we'll talk about here is the up and down motion. So 
if we just isolate everything else and look at just how our body moves up and down throughout the swing, it's very important. So at address, as I'm kind of setting up here, if I get rid of the golf club, I'm just kind of athletic stance. I got a little bit of knee bend. My chest is slightly down. I'm, I'm kind of like I'm almost playing shortstop, not quite as low as I would be, but just a little bit like that, or just kind of a relaxed defensive position in basketball. Now, as I swing to the top of the swing, what actually happens here, as I continue my backswing, I'm gonna load up a little bit more into the ground. And that's almost like you're gonna be jumping. So as I'm loading up, I'm almost kind of preparing to, to drive upward and jump, which will be the end part of the swing. But just realize pretty much all PGA Tour golfers, all pro golfers are at least staying level or dropping down a little bit. You don't really see guys that raise up in the backswing. So if we watch that, this is kind of this motion where my head drops a little bit. Here's my address, here's the top of the backswing. Now this is what's important. After we get loaded up at the top of the backswing, as we start to rotate through and rotate into the finish, what's actually happening, if you watch those tour players again, as they get to that nice finish, you'll notice how their chest to their lower body, all that is flat. If you looked at their shirt buttons, it's actually gonna be facing a little bit up toward the sky here, and they're in this nice extended position, really, really balanced over the lead foot. Well, if I took out all the rotation, I took out all the weight shift, and I just looked at that, here's the dress, here's the top of my backswing, and then my finish would be like this, my chest is extended. And that's really important in the golf swing because I have to get this club to whip through contact. I have to get this club to turn back up so that I can really accelerate on through there and into the finish. So let's break that down. What am I doing in the transition? Well, number one, as I'm going into the backswing, I'm actually dropping down a little bit. As I start my downswing, I'm kind of staying down. So that's the key. I don't want to start popping up into that position right away. I want to stay down in my transition and I'm only extending as I'm coming through the ball and toward the target. I don't extend toward the ball. I extend toward the target as I'm coming on through. So that's piece number one. As you're starting that downswing, stay down, wait until you're coming through the ball to start extending back up. Piece number two is going to be my right to left transition. So if we're looking at the address here, my weight's about 50-50. You could favor the right side a little bit if you want to. Um, most players aren't all the way over on their left at address, but this is the least important piece. What's really important is what you do from there. As I start my backswing, my weight's gonna shift to the inside of my right foot. So you can kind of imagine the pressure on the inside of your foot. It's gonna favor the right ankle as you get more halfway back into the swing. So as I start to make my weight shift, as my left arm is about halfway back, that's about the max your weight's gonna to shift to the right. As you continue the backswing, this is the real key here, if you wanna have that good transition, as I continue the backswing and start my downswing, my weight is already well on its way forward in the swing. So if I have a little step here, we can imagine I'm gonna step, as I start to continue my backswing, I'm gonna step forward. So see how, as I'm making my backswing continue, I'm already, or I'm finishing off my backswing and starting my downswing, my weight shift is already starting to the front. So if you watch this drill, we'll do a slow motion video here. Watch when my foot starts to step forward. I'm gonna pull my feet together. You notice my front foot starts to step as my arms and hands are still going back. That's crucial for a good start to the downswing. If I'm at the top of my swing and I'm waiting till I start down to start to shift my weight to the left, it's way too late. You're gonna end up throwing your arms at it. You're gonna end up being very late. You're gonna be, end up flipping the shot. So that's the key there. I have to start my transition to the left in the back half of my backswing. And it, as I start my downswing, my weight is already shifting over that direction. It's very important though, don't start to slide way in front. I don't wanna get way out here in front of the golf ball. Again, I'm gonna have to kind of stand up and flip to reach that ball. It's just a small weight shift. My body's angled back and then I can push into my left leg and rotate on through as I get to that good tall finish position again, my weight's balanced on my left side. Notice how I don't have any weight on my right foot, maybe 10% of my weight's on my right foot, but everything's just kind of stacked over my left side, nice and balanced, high chest again. That's that great weight shift. So when we put these two together, or when we put that, simplify that, weight shift starts in the last half of the downswing. As you start the downswing, weight shift starts in the last, last half of the backswing. As you start the downswing, your weight should already be going to the left. That's a real critical move. And to try that out, make sure you go ahead and do that step drill and time that up. Now, last piece here is rotation. If you can imagine, if I'm gonna jump up and twist my body, so if I'm gonna jump and turn, 
this way. What's actually happening there, I'm gonna get a little bit sciencey here, but it doesn't, we're gonna make it way simpler in the, in the end. My, if I wanna turn this way, my foot has to push that way, or my, my right foot has to turn that way, my left foot has to push that way. Imagine you're, you're taking your fingers on a bottle cap and you're trying to twist them um, to, the, to the right or to the left. That's the direction as it happens. So as I push this way with my foot, so as this foot pushes that way, that foot pushes that way, that's gonna be me turning this way. An easier way to think about this is just go ahead and set up and actually twist your feet to the right. That's the backswing. As I start my downswing, I'm gonna load up. Notice how if I wanna twist the other way, I can rotate my hips, and then I'm gonna to twist to the left. That's all that's happening. So in the golf swing, I'm pushing my, with my feet, letting my right leg straighten a little bit. My hips are now turning. That's gonna allow me to get that good full shoulder turn as I go to the top. As I start my transition, remember at this point, as I start my downswing, my weight's already shifting to the left. Now my weight's in my left foot. I'm gonna push out that direction and let my hips clear out of the way. So let's just simplify that a bit, not to get too far off track with the, the feet pushing into the ground. What do I need to feel with this? Well, in the backswing, I need to feel like my hips are really rotating early. I wanna get my hips going off the ball. I wanna go ahead and get that rotation happening so that when I get to the start of the downswing, my weight shift is already going to the left and my hips are already opening up a little bit. A great way to know if you're doing this correctly, if you watch your swing, as you come to impact, your right foot should be barely coming off the ground a little bit. If my right heel is still on the ground at impact and a little past impact, now I know that I don't have the rotation that I need in my swing. I need to go ahead and let that foot come up I'm pushing with this left foot, letting that right heel come up, and now I can get that rotation. Again, as I come all the way on through, now my right shoulder is gonna feel like it's facing down the target. My chest is nice and high to the left. My belt buckle on my pants is facing straight ahead to my target in the distance there. So I know that's a lot of detail. We're going into to probably too much detail there, but I thought I'd just go through and answer some questions. Now let's simplify. What do I do in the transition? To break those pieces down, let's go ahead and do 10 swings here. Number one, as I start my downswing, my weight is staying down. I'm holding that until I come through the shot and then I'm gonna extend. That's the up and down piece. Number two is my weight shift going to the left. As I start my downswing, my weight shift should already be moving to the left. My left foot should feel like it has some pressure in it. Then I can start my downswing and come on through. As I do my rotation, my rotation should already be going to the left as I start my downswing and then I'm gonna be able to rotate on through to a good full finish. Great way to check this, even simpler than that. At the top of the swing, you should be rotated, good full shoulder turn, everything is staying down. As you finish, everything is nice and high, weight balance on the left leg, right toe straight up and down, and now you got a great feeling of what the transition should be like. One last drill to take this and make it easy. Let's do that step drill a good 20 or 30 times, put our feet together, step forward as you're going back, and then come to that good full finish. I found that if you can do this step drill and have that nice and synced up and your finish looks really good, everything else just kind of falls into, into balance. As long as you turn on your backswing and you do that step drill right, you really don't have to worry too much about the transition. It's just gonna happen all on its own. All right guys, so Try out those reps, do the, the elevation up and down, do the rotation, and then do the weight shift. Do about 20 or 30 reps of each one of those. Then let's take it to the next notch. I want you to do the step drill. Go ahead and complete that. Make sure you get that good high finish. And then lastly, you're gonna do that for about 20 or 30 reps. Just in your living room is completely fine. And then lastly, we wanna check our rotation. Make sure we really rotate in the back swing, rotate in the follow through like we talk about in the power turn. And then now go ahead, get started and that power turn section. I think that's a really big one. We gotta rotate back, we gotta rotate through. If we don't get that rotation, we get kind of a short rotation, short power turn on the backswing, we end up just kind of casting from the top. Our weight shift just goes all out the window and we really struggle. All right, now very important, there's more to this. I talked a little bit about getting that power turn, getting that good full rotation. If we cut off our turn and we make a short backswing, now all of a sudden we're gonna wanna lunge from the top we're gonna to wanna to stand up early. We're not gonna get the rotation coming through there. And it just kind of throws everything out of whack. So the power turn is really critical for this. I've got a bonus video that's gonna walk you through the power turn. 
I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. Just go ahead and click the card up on your screen or the description down below, the link in the description, and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Let's go ahead and start turning more, get your transition even better, get you a lot more power. Let's go ahead and get started. Most of the instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter, and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your back swing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, so those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work. 